Slicers in Excel are fantastic because users can just click buttons and they get to see the things that they want to see. Now, normally we see slicers with pivot tables or tables, but the truth is that if we use a concept known as disconnected tables, we can use slicers for anything we like. And that's what we're looking at in this video. And through these techniques, it's going to take your reporting to a whole new level. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here is the workbook that we are using for this example. We have three tabs, data, disconnected tables and report. And our solution is going to bring these three tabs together. On our data tab, we have a table called data and it includes values from the 14th of October, 2024, down to the 14th of October, 2025. And we also have some additional data for November at the bottom. The first stage of this process is that we want to create our disconnected tables and they are contained on our disconnected tables sheet. Now these are just standard tables. We just press control T and that would create a table. Our tables are called time frame and date. Now time frame contains fixed values. We only have two options. It's either period or it's year to date. They are the two values which we are allowing. Therefore, there's no variability in our options here. That's not the same when it comes to our date table. We want that to only contain the month and dates for the data that we have in our table. Now for this technique to work, our disconnected table must have more rows than we will ever need. This table is holding our month end dates, but we need more rows than all of our month end dates. The other technique we need to use is to create a formula that will generate all of our month end dates. And then we're going to link those month end dates into our table. And that's because a table in Excel cannot hold an array. So let's start by creating our list of dates. For that, we're going to use the EO month function equals EO month, open in bracket. And we want the end of month for our date column and we want that for zero months in the future. That means that for each row, we are calculating the end of month date. Unfortunately, when we close that bracket and calculate, it returns the hash value error. And that's because EO month can't handle ranges of values. It can only handle arrays. So to force this into an array, we could use plus or we could use minus minus, anything that forces a calculation on our date values. When we commit that, it now returns the end of month for each of our values. We can now use unique to only get the unique values. And also to make sure our dates are in the right order, we're also going to use the sort function. We can close that bracket at the end and calculate. Our array now only contains our month end dates. Next, we need to get these dates into our table. In the first cell, I'll type equals if, and we want to know if is blank, and then we're going to reference the first cell. Now, what happens with a table is that when we calculate, it copies that formula down automatically. That means for our first date rows, it will return false because they aren't blank. But when it comes to the rows below, it will return true. That means that if it returns true, we're going to return the maximum of our date values. So I'll select cell D9, I'll press F4, and then we want to use hash to select the entire spill range. We can then come to our, if our is blank is false, in that scenario, we just want to return that value. I'll close that bracket and commit that formula. As you can see, we now have our month end dates, or if we have a blank cell, it then returns the maximum value. Now, the reason this is important is because a slicer only displays unique values. It doesn't matter how many rows we have in our table, it will only display once for each of our values. We've now created both of our tables. We're now ready to create our slicers. I'll click on time frame, 
Then I'll go into Insert and select Slicer. And we want to create a slicer for our time frame column. I'll click OK. We then select inside our date table. And again, we're going to go to Insert and select Slicer. We want that for our date column. And I'll click OK. We now have our two slicers. I can select both of those, press Control X to cut them, and then come to our report and I will paste both of those slicers. I'm going to place these on our sheet. At the top, we want our time frame. Let's close that up at the bottom. I'm holding Alt so that it snaps to the grid. I'll do the same for our dates. And then let's bring that down. There we go, we now have our time frame and our date. Now the thing about slicers is that when we click the buttons, so if I select period, if we look in our disconnected table, it filters that table to only show period. If I select a month, it filters our disconnected table to only show that month. That means we want to get the values which are visible in each of these tables. Let's start by getting our date value. And I'm going to start here in cell D10. Now this is where the formula piece gets really interesting because we're going to use the by row function. This means we're going to perform a calculation row by row. And the rows that we want to perform it on are based on our date column. Now what calculation do we want to perform row by row? Well, we need to use our own custom function that performs a subtotal on each row. Therefore, for that, we need to use the lambda function. Lambda is a function that enables us to pass placeholders into a calculation. Each placeholder for this scenario, we're going to call row, but this could be anything. We could call our placeholder any name we like. Then for each row, we're going to use the subtotal function. Subtotal calculates but only the values which are visible. So if we use count A and we want to check count A on each row, that means this formula will only return one, it will only count the rows which are visible. So if I close that bracket and calculate, you can see all of our rows are currently visible. But if I select October, only the first item is visible. If I select November, it's the second item, December, the third item, and so on. And you can see that that is based on our disconnected table. Now we don't want to return ones and zeros. Instead, we want to return the actual values. So I'm going to add our filter function. We want to filter the table, and then we want to return based on that true or false value. Now we get a date. Well, that's a date serial number, but it is representative of a date. It's possible that we could have, unfortunately, multiple items selected, and we don't want that. We only want a single date. Therefore, we're going to use the max. That means it will always return the last date selected. There we go, we only get a single date. I'm now going to copy, Control C, that formula into our date cell. And when we calculate that, it now returns that date because it's formatted as a date. That means as I select values in here, they are automatically reflected in our date cell. Next, we want to do the same thing with our time frame. We could apply the same technique, but for this, if you are an Excel Academy member, we have a custom function that already achieves this. I'll go to my Excel off the grid tab. I can search for visible in our Excel off the grid add-in function vault. And that now returns two lambdas and we want to use our visible rows function. And I'm going to insert that into my workbook. I can now just use equals FX, visible rows. I will select my disconnected table. I'll close that bracket at the end and calculate. And that now gives us our values of period or year to date and we can select either one of those. Now, once again, we only want a user to select one value. So we're going to wrap this in the take function. That means it will return the first value. So take first row 
close bracket. And there we go. If we select period or year to date, it will change that. And as we select different periods, it will also select those. Now let's build our main calculation. For this, we're going to use the group by function, but we could use any function we like. But for now, we're just going to use group by. Equals group by, opening bracket. For the row fields, we're gonna to come to our data table and we want our item column. Then we come to our values field. And we're going to use our value column. We then have our function argument and we want sum. If we close that bracket, we now have each of our products and the values that are related to those products. But our slicers don't currently achieve anything at all. We need to apply these to our group by function. So let's take a look at group by. We've had our function argument. The next argument is field headers. We don't need to change any options there. We then have total depth. We don't need to change any of the options there. Then we have sort order. We don't need any of those options either. Finally, we come to filter array and that's where we can start to apply our slices. But there's some trickery that we need to play here as well. So let's go and calculate this trickery and then we can apply it back to our group by. I just want to interrupt things here to say that if you want to understand how these kinds of formulas really work so that you can build these kind of solutions yourself without having to endlessly watch YouTube videos in the hope that somebody has solved your exact scenario, then you should check out our Dynamic Formulas Unleashed course inside our Excel Academy. It contains everything you need to understand how Excel formulas really work. You can check it out at excelthegrid.com. How this filter array argument works for group by is that for each row of our data, we either need to calculate true or false or a number or a zero. And based on this, group by knows whether to include if it's true or a non-zero number or exclude if it's false or zero. That then determines which values are included inside our group by. So let's come back to our report tab we're going to select October and period. Now we're gonna come back to our data tab and we're going to start by calculating which values should be included for our period calculation. I'll enter equals and we want to check where our date is less than or equal to our end of month, opening bracket, and then we're going to select our report and our month end date. We want zero months in the future. I can then close that bracket. And when we calculate that, it returns true for all the items which are October. And as we scroll down, when it gets to November, it now changes to false. But this only picks up the values which are less than October. We also need to select the values which are greater than the 1st of October. Let's edit our formula. And now let's add our second condition. We also want to know where our date is greater than our EO month from our report, but we want to know where it's greater than the end of the previous month plus one day. So we want end of month minus one. That means for October, we're going to go back one month, which is the 30th of September, but we want it to be greater than that. So when we close those brackets and calculate, it now returns one if it's October and zero for November. But if we come to our report and change it to November, when we come back, you can see it's zero for October and one for November. That means we are only calculating the period that we have selected for our date. Now that's just period. What if we want year to date? Well, let's add these options into our formula. We're going to use the switch function and we want to switch based upon our time period. And then we're going to say that where our time period, if that is equal to period, in that scenario, we want to get our one or zero based on this calculation. But if it's based on year to date, in that scenario, we need 
a different calculation. I'm going to copy this calculation here and then we're going to edit it. So I'll paste that in there. I'll close that bracket at the end. Currently, our period and year to date are both selecting the same time period. If we're looking at our year to date, we still want it to be less than our selected month end date, but we want it to be greater than the 1st of January for our selected year. Therefore, we can remove this section at the end. And we want to check where our date column, we want to check where that is greater than, using the date function, where our year is based on our report and our date selected. That means it will take the date from 2024. I'll close the bracket on the year, enter a comma, come back to our calculation. Then for the month, we want the first month and the first day. That section will generate the 1st of January for any given year. I can close our formula and calculate. So instead of period, if we change this to year to date and come back to our data, you can see we have one for any date before the 1st of December. That means we've now got a one or a zero for every row in our data set. We're going to add this into our group by function. I'll copy the switch calculation, come back to our group by, and then in our filter array, I'm going to paste that calculation. And when we commit that, our function now updates. Let's take a look at our period for the 31st of October. As we select different months, our calculations increase. Let's go back to October and select year to date. We have 3898. When we get to November, our number's bigger. When we get to December, our number is bigger again, as we would expect, because it's a year to date calculation. What happens when we get to January? It resets back to the start and starts building up for our year to date. Now, what happens when we add new data? Currently, we're going down to the 31st of October. In our data set, at the bottom, we have some values for November, some quite big values for November, so we can easily identify them. When we add that to our table, that means the dates in our disconnected table will then include that item, which would then also include that in our slicer. Here we have the 30th of November, and when we select that, you can see that we have those large numbers for our November dates. So by using this method, we have our data table, and we also have our disconnected tables. We use slices on our disconnected tables to drive formulas. Those formulas return the date or the time frame, and then using that date and time frame, we're then able to select the relevant values from our data table, which means we then have a report that shows the values that we need. And this is all because of the power of slicers and disconnected tables. If you like this video and learn something new, then why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.